Alrighty, sorry about that. Uh, for those tuning in uh, after this live stream, uh, there was a bit of a tech debacle, but we are good now. <laughs> Hopefully this should uh, function a little bit better than what we were dealing with just a minute ago. Um, long story short, uh, because I'm going to repeat myself for the YouTube viewers who will watch this down the line, coming from Keith's channel, hello everyone um, on YouTube, you know. Uh, basically, I'm going on vacation, I need to play shorter games, not longer games. Originally I was going to play Mass Effect, but I thought, what the heck, why not give this weird game that I heard good things about a try. Um, I've had it installed on my hard drive for forever. We're going to play it on Master of Deduction, which means we won't see fancy icons for people or things that we can interact with. We need to use our brains to solve the mystery. Um, but yeah, other than that, I know nothing about this game. Truly zero. So uh, anyway, uh, here we go. We should just jump straight into it. Many locals despised Brits. The Empire took over Cordona half a century ago, and its exploitation nurtured the hostility. Should be a significantly smoother experience now. <laughs> Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the week's long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm... Quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. That was interesting. The lighting was very pretty. I'm really interested to see how exactly we play. <laughs> So yeah, from what I understand, these Sherlock Holmes games are Sherlock Holmes games are very uh, well liked by people who are like hey, into Sherry, like hardcore puzzle come on, games. Catch up. Yes, yes. Oh my god, am I like goth Victorian era Sherlock Holmes? Look at his like little like pant bag. <laughs> I can't interact with that. What do I need to interact with? Probably these apples, right? Nope. Just the door? Or do I have to get something from John? Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. 
Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. The way the character lurches around, you can definitely feel that this is like a double A game and not a triple A game. <laughs> All right. Dark rituals at the graveyard. I guess we're just starting fast here. And so right after I turned the corner, I saw him, the necromancer. He started to nervously look around, but I quickly hid behind a gravestone. Common sense told me to run, but my duty to you, my readers, was more important than the risk to my own life. Luckily, the vampire did not notice me and continued his devilish ritual. He raised a woman from her grave and ordered her to kill two men who were close by. Then they kissed and made unholy love in her freshly unearthed coffin. It lasted for hours. <laughs> but when the moon became low in the sky, they turned into bats and flew away. I managed to obtain a few photographs of the victims. Unfortunately, these were confiscated by police. That's quite the story. Oh. Huh. Oh, okay. Kenyan barman, friendly board. Cordonan adventurer. Interesting. Early riser, sympathetic. French noble, pretentious perfume, sympathetic. Welsh tourist, friendly, allergic to seafood. Scottish singer, lived on a ship, friendly. Just seeing who I can interact with. All right, I guess I can't interact with them yet. Yeah, I can't really, I can't talk to any of them. Oh, and I sprint with R2. Divine art, look at that. All right, uh, let's just keep exploring this little place at first. I wanna, I wanna fool around inside the area to see if we could find anything before I actually progress the main story. All right, a letter lost in the hotel. Dear James, I read your treatise on the binomial theorem with great interest, and although some parts of it still remain unclear for me, I must say that you have done an impressive amount of research. I strongly recommend you publish as soon as possible, for I anticipate a great and wide practical usage of your method as soon as it becomes known. Sincerely yours, Professor Gilbert. Intriguing. So there's some sort of mathematician here as well. And again, I don't think I can really interact with anyone. I may as well just go downstairs and check in finally. Oh, that was like the edge of the hotel anyway. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Can I interact with anything over here? Talk to anyone yet? Nope. Can I ask some questions about the room? Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Guess not. All right, so we'll just have to keep moving. They're above... Yeah, the room numbers are above the doors, so... I went up, like, the <laughs> furthest way from my room. Oops. Can't go up there. So, yeah, I've heard, um... I've heard interesting things about these Frogware games. Uh, I know that The Devil's Daughter and Crimes and Punishments are very, very well respected. Um, I haven't actually heard much about this one. Um... But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's just I don't know how many people played it. They're very niche. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. I mean, Let's that check sounds what good. they have on offer. He really is just teleporting Watson, huh? Because his name is John, right? 
That's gotta be who that is. Can't interact with anyone yet. Gotcha. Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Oh, what I would not give for poached eggs and hollandaise right now. An eggs Benedict would be so good. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Goro Akechi walks on screen. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. Uh. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. I mean, if he could draw that that quickly, that's pretty impressive, right? Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if... If seafood's not to your taste, okay, everyone Okay, I guess you just expansion. take the plate. Our Dang. Eggs with hollandaise this is just all mine. <laughs> Looks like some fancy cheese, huh? Some delicious big sliced Swiss. Is there anything I could like over here if I walked over Sherry, there? Sherry, I'm over here with my person. new Ursine companion. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. Interesting. Okay. Time to examine this. There's three clues, so... The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. Hmm. There we go. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or Craven, from the old English name meaning garlic place. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Sherlock can ask bystanders about a piece of evidence. Press start to open the casebook. Pin the evidence with square. Okay, so this is this is how it works, right? I can pin this, and then it becomes uh, a thing to actually interact Pardon, with. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Okay. <laughs> May I ask you something? That's a question I can answer. 
There were three people at the table, a couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have well, to find him. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the Kane's owner on your first try. Why Excuse not? Excuse me, just Let's one see question. how good you really are. I'm so sorry. I can't help you, sir. All right, so now we can, like, investigate people. Cordonian lawyer has an overbite friendly. Sympathetic early riser. Irish pharmacist has overbite. Curd auditor plays harmonica. We're looking for someone who's unfriendly. Does not seem to be that person. Oop. Uh... Try to find the Navy officer. Social anxiety, Arab engineer, sympathetic. Albanian tourist, English singer, pyro pyromaniac, unfriendly. French diplomat though. That can't be right, though, right? Because we think he's English. Are you able to help me? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Oh, the Navy officer, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The men talked about yachting, and the lady was fidgeting with her cane. With the cane. Perhaps she put it aside, and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. Okay, so I wasn't really expecting that to be how that worked. Uh, the question is, where is the seance room? Because I do not have a very clear idea. Oh. Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. Oh, is it in here? Gotcha. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves. First my cane, now the diamond. What is going on? Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hmm? Hey, boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made. A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. <laughs> well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? This is baffling. <laughs> Swole. Woolen reddish skin. I don't know how that plays into anything. Uh, expensive new clothes, rich and fashionable. Uh, doesn't wear a redding ring, but it is a head of garlic. Bruised knuckles indicate a, uh, yeah, a, uh, Let's see. Judging by the heraldic emblem on his sig uh, signet ring and cane, I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a noble Englishman in the habit of visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver malady. His florid face indicates he has succumbed to the temptation to drink a few shots of alcohol. Perhaps he was unsettled by the seance. By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical condition. Already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond. I mean, I think the answer is uh, that he is actually a bored British nobleman. Um, I feel like this is a incorrect answer because I feel like the game wouldn't want me to be so mean, but he was literally just swinging at someone. So uh, 
I'm gonna just say it just to be a dick. <laughs> Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. <laughs> yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr. Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. All right. Uh, hmm. What happened at the seance? You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah, it was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? <laughs> to be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. So... I'm going to investigate further. Don't interesting. Fret. I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. A perfectly egg-shaped diamond. That's weird, right? This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? Yes, absolutely. At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. Alrighty. Oval the diamond was placed on the table oh, so gotcha. that all participants could reach it. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. New mind palace clue. Okay, so we have to go into our mind Half palace. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. A moth brooch? What does that tell us about anything? So, I mean, we know the seance uh, is basically a hoax, right? Ghosts don't exist in this universe. Everything can be deduced. So, my guess is the wife took it. <laughs> Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? Quite That's a display so for the okay, tremulous it's visitor. Nothing I can interact with. Quite what a display <laughs> for the tremulous visitor. 
Uh, Raph says, oh, I didn't know you were back. Yeah, I, I managed to fix the issue uh, that we were having earlier. It just, it took me like a half hour to get. Thank you for on. helping us resolve the situation, sir. Uh, but also welcome Splinter as well. Uh, we, we managed to uh, get the stream up and running despite technical issues, so. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Right, let's or see. someone may notice the trick they should not see. Ethiopian medium friendly disoriented. Turkish servant affable accommodating. We know John. We don't need to worry about him. What about wife? British aristocrat barely conscious affable. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing, She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. <laughs> oh my really god. Shy. Poor thing. Alright, uh, let's see. Mind Palace. Ghosts of the past. Lady Craven faced the window. Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. All right, so these things aren't really meaningful. Can't really make a deduction based on these. We'll need to find a few things uh, to connect there. No clues for that, because there's actually no thing. Ghosts of the past, okay. Seance thievery scene. The center of the seance room has a table for conducting seances. There is a holder where the diamond was kept. A cigar butt and whiskey glass were on the table at the place nearest the main door. Opposite the window, a glass of wine had been partially spilled. The chair was thrown aside with great force. Lady Craven is barely conscious, but appears to be unhurt. After she has taken a short rest, I should be able to talk to her. Oh, let's read his testimony again. The medium Luca Galici was hired by the Cravens to summon the spirits of the former owners of the diamond, who, as they believed, were of Indian royalty. During the seance, a spirit appeared and frightened the lady to the extent that she fainted, the stone disappeared. Lord Craven believes that it is a duplicitous robbery. He has demanded that the medium be locked up to prevent his escape. I impressed Lord Craven with my deduction skills, and he believes I can find the diamond. All right. We will pin Lord Craven, and I will ask questions. What the fuck? <laughs> what? what, happened? what the, I don't know. What is happening in this game? <laughs> I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind. He has here. something on sure his you'll neck. Make some, good deductions. some kind of chalk, maybe? Something used in the ritual? I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. Hmm. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and... All right, we'll go back into the Mind Palace. Lord Craven faced the window, and she uh, was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Oh, that is a good call. I kind of figured that would be the case. Okay. Okay. Lord Craven did, in fact, punch the medium in the face. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Recently scratched, something stuck. This is a heel. It is a broken heel. Look at that.
Angie, it looks like the old man is losing it. His beehives are being ransacked and his bees are going down one by one. I don't think there's much honey left in staying with the swarm. If you catch my drift, meet me at the docks at noon. We'll do it together. Aha, it is, it's probably the wife and her friend. That is my guess. All right, so why can't I look at this and interact with this? Because it's clear that this was a meeting place. Uh, let me see, the, is there a broken, here we go. Someone in the courtyard. Can I ask you a question? Ex excuse me, what? I'm not sure I know. Okay. Someone in the courtyard. This is their only way into the courtyard. So they must be someone, I bet they are someone who works at staff. That's my guess. Hmm. Is there anything in here for me to play with, to interact with? There does not appear to be any broken uh, shoes around, but the uniform, oh, you know what? There is, there's one missing shoe there and it looks like the uniform is our heels. So look at that one, that one has a broken heel. All right, it is definitely one of the people who worked at staff. Can I talk to him? I don't remember if she was doing this before. May I ask for your assistance? Sir, I don't know. Try asking someone else. I think I've already deduced this. <laughs> I think I already know that it must have been Such someone else. Such a shame that Inspector Placido vanished. I'd feel much safer with him handling this. Let's see. All right, the person with social anxiety is gone, so can't be them. Is, it, is there another maid anywhere that I can speak to? Isn't life too short to remain sober? Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm so sorry. I can't help you, sir. Huh. Okay, so there's no one there for us to talk to. All right, my assumption is we need to ask people in this room. It will be contained here. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Feebleness of women. All right, so someone was in the courtyard. I guess that's not how we interact with this. Medium's testimony. Can I ask him about this? Find the st nope. stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. So I thought they said I could ask people questions with. Find the stone, Mr. If Holmes, I pinned and the quickly. dialogue. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. Is this the only thing I can interact with? How do I This looks it? recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Oh, okay. Do you think just a ghost could leave this footprint? More. I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. All right. Again, we know where it's going. So that's right there. Again, I, I don't really need to look. I know where the uh, I know exactly where it leads <laughs> but that's fine all right it won't let me uh, use that mode for this I don't think because I have the difficulty turned up And yeah, I have, I've pinned the relevant uh, evidence. I knew it, look at that. I discovered the clue before the game wanted me to. Size four with a broken heel. Rose de Moore, 
All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... No, what a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the... Could you help me? Oh, yes. I can tell you everything, sir. She's really changed her story. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Aha. Can I ask you a question? Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. I respect it. You're not going to snitch. That's good. Are you able to help me? I would never refuse a nobleman, but I know nothing, sir. Time to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? So the maid was supposed to be cleaning by the pictures. This must be her. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You change shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? Hmm. Should I lie or should I tell the truth? A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss? Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying <laughs> on guests? Uh. Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't, but only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. Ah. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. Poor <laughs> oh, girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Let's get back to the crime scene. Uh. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Oh my god. <laughs> These guys are the worst. Alright, uh, I do want to... Go to my mind palace. Or I guess not. Uh... Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. All right. Uh... <gasps> no. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. 
Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. It probably rolled underneath the couch. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jelly? The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. All right, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think things are going to get. Bacchus would find this place incredibly dull, don't you think? Yeah, Bacchus would find this place dull. Uh, I think what's going to happen is it just turns out that the wife took it and she was co-conspiring with someone out the window. And that's why she was shocked when there was a lady out the window. Uh, maybe because she was planning with someone, the Angie person. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her that. behavior in the hall? Could you help me? Please, don't get angry, sir. Oh, oops. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. May I ask you something? Please. Don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. Time to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you? Unlucky seance. It seems the seance went south. I don't know what happened yet, but I doubt that the spirits were responsible for the punch to Luca Galici's face. Well, Perhaps the man can you satisfy my who is hit what? him can explain. Don't. I want to just be able to ask her about the thing that was right there. All right, then moth pin. Diamond was stolen, stolen during the seance. Lord Craven punched the medium. That's nothing. Yeah, it's not compatible with anything. Get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. I want to be able to go in there. What the heck? Lady Craven is not who she seems. Oh, gotcha. Wait, what? Did I like Lady fail Craven that forever? Not who she no, seems. okay. So, oh, we have to do this quickly, okay? Was on the lookout. I'm guessing you didn't get what you were after. It happens. I always wanted Lady a pet cat. Is not who she seems. Okay. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? I don't know her behavior in the hall. I can't ask about it. Is it just one of them? <laughs> this is very confusing. I just, I don't understand Lady how this mechanic Craven works. Is not who she seems. I guess we'll have to try again. Rem what the heck? Remember to focus only on what's relevant to the room. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? What is her behavior in the hall? Lady Craven is not who she seems. 
Remember her behavior? so confused <laughs> so it, it will tell me if I got Lady one Cobra wrong so yep so cannot use a fish knife Sherlock. I think they're suspicious or oh, they were checking you out Lady Craven is I just don't know how I was supposed to know about the fish knife right like Okay, uh... Alright, I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening uh, while trying to get the Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. How... So, that's my... My question is, how was I supposed to know all those things? I guess I just have to determine which questions were seemingly about her if so i mean that's fine i can i can get used to that aha uh -huh. here at last i didn't do that i swear i found her this way well i did have some questions for her but it seems i've arrived too late now it's a matter for the police mr holmes you said it yourself they're children they'll only make things worse you you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine. How cinematic. <laughs> only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look. After you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici, the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225, but that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. This man is taking the death of his mistress very well. Why am I not surprised? Someone was not happy with his post? Someone was not happy with his post? Why can't I interact with it? Someone was not happy with his post? Yeah, I know. <laughs> there we go. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the theft investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. We had to free Elo Dupont, the servant, as we were unable to find any evidence of his participation in the crime. We will inform you of any progress in this case. Lieutenant Gavro, Marseille Police Commissariat. Interesting. Okay. Uh, intriguing. Lord Craven. You promised me compensation for your gross misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal, yet I have not received a penny. 
You know that I lost my job after your false accusations. Now, even after my innocence has been proven, I can't return to work because of my hand injury. If you continue to ignore me, I shall be forced to appeal to the court. All right, Mind Palace. Uh, compensation for abuse. Seance theft, no. Thief friend of the servants, no. Aha. Lord Craven can't control his temper. It is true, he, oh, so he probably hurt someone, dang. The thief had stolen from Lord Craven on his trip, was setting up the servants to cover their tracks. Yeah, none of those really matter now. All right. Do something about it, ho. I, I did not do it, you know that. So that's pinned. It looks like there's dialogue available for it. This Emma's body. Do something about it, Holmes. I, I did not do it. You know that. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. Is there something here I'm supposed to find? This must be the missing diamond. Ah. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. It's unclear when, like, sometimes I'll just pick up something or press X on it, and it's like, okay, you can interact with this now. And then other times, it will, like, not work, and I have Strangled to hold the button. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. Just kind of strange. Where is this last clue? She was crying. Maybe I have to interact with her on this side, see her legs. Nope. Oh, unless I can, there we go. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. <gasps> I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible. We won't get her confession now. There's makeup well, on her there neck. There's a professional medium er, right next door. There's white makeup in her bag, and there was white makeup on Luca's neck. Do something about it, Holmes. All right. Holmes, I, I did not do it. You know that. Do something about it, Holmes. Uh, I, okay, I, guess I, I did not do it. You know that. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh. a neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of this? A moth ring. <laughs> hmm. This ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. Yep, she is with Luca for sure. Uh, Virtus or Dr. Sapit, courage tastes bold. A unique family motto. Interesting. Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. Is there something else on here? There is. Fard Rouge Calomel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past and poor taste. Can I talk to him about this again? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm confused. Hopefully this won't, like, indict them. I doubt I can help with this. Oh, okay. I doubt I can help with this. Get to the point, Mr. Holmes. All right, let's see. Stop wasting time. The murderer is getting away. I doubt I can help with this. I doubt I can help with this. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? It's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Stop wasting time. The murderer is getting away. 
I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah, it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. This is and fascinating. It turns out she had them all along. The trollop. Oh. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Wow, he called her a trollop. That's wild. Things really are getting bad around here, huh? A remarkably simple lock. Alrighty. Now, we shall mind palace it up. The moth ring, the moth pin. Luke and Emma could have met before. Luke and Emma both have jewelry with the same moth design. Could they have something in common? That's my guess. The murderer left the diamond. Lord Craven caught Emma with the stone. I think this is actually what happened here. What if I do, uh, what if I do this? The murderer left the diamond. So, I don't know if that's the case, right? Because I feel like Emma was the one who stole it when she fainted. But we'll leave that there for now. Because I am pretty sure uh, they were in on it and she was supposed to deliver it to him. Because she also was the one with the... Uh, she was also the one with the... Um, they like secret container and stuff too. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Uh, I'm gonna try to just like ask a few questions, right? Um. Such a shame that Inspector Placido vanished. I'd feel much safer with him handling this. All right, that doesn't do anything for me. Such a shame that Inspector okay. Placido vanished. He won't give me anything. I'd feel much safer with him handling this. All right, so two twenty-five. So yeah, he's in a pretty nice room. It's right here, correct? Yes. Oh no, my coat's all goofed up. Teleporting Watson is terrifying. Hmm. Someone is making the most of his stay. Can you blame the man? Tools I'd and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Hmm. Or or a familiar substance. It's the, the ectoplasm yard. that stained the seance table, but this time there's enough for analysis. Dear Luca, I hope you will have time to visit our estate and perform another seance. Since I was last able to speak to my husband through you, I feel that my life has changed completely. I cannot wait until I speak to him again. I am anxious for your visit. Sincerely yours, Countess uh, whatever. Tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure the spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. 
Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. Alrighty. Used a lot of makeup. Took a heavy blow to the face. Trained in sleight of hand. Skinny seems malnourished. That's an interesting clue. I, I wouldn't think much about that, honestly. There we go. Scratched wrists. I definitely think it's the second one, right? The medium's down on his luck. Luca Galici is lean and appears malnourished. His nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. He uses makeup to hide the traces of his illness from malnourishment. His hands and thin fingers indicate that he is skilled at conjuring tricks used to manipulate concealed items. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrist from a recent and short fight. I think he tries his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well, and he sometimes has to go without food. Uh, so the thing is, if he had jail tattoos, why would he cover them up with... Uh, white paint. However, uh, I believe he's more of a criminal than a medium in this new way of uh, earning money by deceiving the wealthy. Right? Yeah. We'll, we'll say he's down on his luck. I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. I, I am not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? I... In fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man. But I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh well, at least I can make the dead talk. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. Ah. Incorrect. Lord Craven, you promised me compensation for your gross misconduct. Uh, I can't return to work because of my hand injury. The spirits are silent, and so am I. This object simply isn't resonating with me. There we go. Let's That's a remarkable one. pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. This is all just a big misunderstanding. This bit... Some clues can be examined with chemical analysis. Okay. Let me just whip out my chemistry kit right here. I am so confused. Drag out two reagents, drag out an operation. Combine so the result matches the target formula. Okay. I am very confused. All right, so I have to mix reagents to get the same thing, right? So how do I do this, right? Um, I'm going to, at some point, need
I'm baffled. All right, so I have to drag out two reagents and then make them equal this. So how the heck do I get a three on the green? So it'll have to be this and then one of the minus twos, right? Oh, is there not a minus two on green? There is. I'm confused. How are those linked? <laughs> uh, combine? This is a incredibly in miss like completely not understandable UI. <laughs> what is this? Oh, okay, here we go. Operations glossary. So, addition combines two reagents. Swaps reagent value from positive to negative or vice versa. Increment adds one to the reagent's value. This is so ridiculously convoluted. Holy smokes. Uh, uh. So, let's do this. Oh, this is a minus five. We do not want that. We want, hmm. Okay, so we'll do this, right? We'll do negative five to this, I guess. Why isn't it like letting me, there we go. Negative five to five and then add a minus two plus three. So we're at what we need there. And then we just need one on the blue. Right? No? I can't create, I can only do this much. What does this do? Okay, I can't connect them. I, I have to, I have to somehow get these three from two reagents. I do not know how that is possible. Four, one, I guess I do this and then a two and a, do I have a blue with a four? I do. I don't even know how I would get to a four here because there's only a few of these that have reds on them. Huh, I am very puzzled. I really, I have no idea. I mean, I've got to be able to do more than just two, right? Um, all right, so let's see this. I can add, this one adds, right? So if I do this, that gives me four. 
and then uh, we need to build three. So we'll do this again. And this is just the two reagents that I need, right? Okay. I just don't understand what I do now. Do I, com I do I just, can I combine the outcomes of these into a new thing? Okay, four and three. Okay, so we have four and three. And can I just add this to it? Do I just, no, okay. Is there a step I'm missing maybe? Uh, can I just combine these again? Can I do this? Okay, I can. Okay, never mind. So the just two reagents isn't accurate. I have to find a way to add as many things together. Okay. It's my faith in this medium has burst, just like a... Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. That was baffling. <laughs> uh, okay. This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. Is there anything else in here for me to play with? This is all... Okay. Just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. So he's still glowing yellow. This is all just yellow. a big misunderstanding. Uh, what does this mean? So like my the issue that I'm running into now the spirits confirm it is that it this is all just a big misunderstanding it feels like I should have it. more like it would be different if I could just present them all evidence all the time and like walk up to them hmm. and stuff but it's just someone like someone is making the most of his stay it's just unclear when I can actually interact or not hidden jewels this is all what exactly does this mean again oh <laughs> is this like an open world situation? All right, ghosts of the past. All right. See, my question is, I don't know how many of these are actually accurate. Emma had a history of deceit. I thought I already tried this combination. Emma was a thief, but made Lord Craven believe that the servants were stealing. She'd done it throughout their trip. With their past crossed in the past, Luca could well know Emma's predilection for thievery. The medium Luca Galici could have known that Emma was a thief and that she was trying to frame him for her crime. escorting Luca to be locked in his room, the servants mistreated and scratched him. I need to ask about Just that. A big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. So let's ask which servants scratched him. Because where are they? Oh, do I not have a note about the scratches? May I ask for your assistance? Oh, sir, I'm afraid I don't know about that. <laughs> it's 
sorry. Uh, maybe a guest noticed it. All right, we'll go ask this guy again because I don't know who. Uh, the Cravens okay. are upstairs in room 226. This guy's it is one of our finest suites. Again, I really want to just be able to finally say, hey, look at this note, but. And again, it doesn't let me interact with that beehive thing. Maybe that's his jail tattoo, is the beehive on his neck? I can't really tell. Can I undo deductions, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe I was giving him too much of a benefit of the doubt. Are you able to help me? Sir, I don't know. Try asking someone else. Such a shame that Inspector Placido vanished. I'd feel much safer with him handling this. Such a shame that Inspector Placido vanished. I'd feel much safer with him handling this. Huh. Okay, so that's where that guy is. And 226 is where the other guy is, right? So they're, they're close together, but like separated by this big wall. Do something about it, Holmes. I, I did not do it. You know that. Do something about it, Holmes. I, I did not do it. You know that. Do something about it, Holmes. I, I did not do it. You know that. Do something about it, Holmes. I, I did not do Lord it. Craven you know told that. Me, told me that he spent some time at the bar before coming upstairs. Let's go confirm that. It's really unclear <laughs> what to do, but... Sorry. Uh, maybe a guest noticed it. May I ask you something? That's a question I can answer. I found a witness who advises that Lord Craven only spent only a short time in the bar after he left the seance room. Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you with that, sir. Maybe I'm supposed to lean on these people more. Enjoys fishing is affable. May I ask you something? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. Can I ask you a question? I would never deny you, sir, but I know nothing about this. Time to check your who, what, and what. I know, I know, John. All right. So I'm definitely missing something over here. There we go. Let's see. I still feel like there's something I'm missing, right? <laughs> I'm going to get this totally wrong, and it's going to be embarrassing. I, I feel like it's got to be him, right? 
it it feels like I'm really close to the <sighs> Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? I need to ask more questions. Is this room, right? Someone was not happy with his post. But I want to like Someone interact was not happy with his post. <laughs> so young and so dead. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. So that note, though, oh, let's pin this and then talk to Lord Craven. I cannot cover for you, Lord Craven. The facts are conclusive. You murdered your mistress. It wasn't me. You have no proof, not a whit. A couple of whiskeys go down fast for an alcoholic. That left you plenty of time for murder. That's ridiculous. I am no alcoholic. And there are witnesses who will attest I was there for at least a quarter of an hour. You entered the room just as Miss Emma was hiding the diamond. Discovering that she was the thief was the final straw. Preposterous! I didn't know a thing about it until you showed me her stash. You have bruised knuckles and... You look a mess. The poor woman fought for her life, and you bear all the evidence. This whole evening was a mess. You know I got into a scuffle with the medium in the seance room. Nothing has changed since then. There's plenty of proof, sir. The police would certainly arrest you. You scoundrel. You said you would help me. I had nothing to do with it, as you will soon see. There is a more charitable interpretation. Miss Emma was a thief of unsavory character. Perhaps she threatened you, forced you to fight for your life. Are you... You suggest I lie to the police? I didn't want blind to justice. actually your lover was a <laughs> commit influence. to this. I thought she we were going to ask him questions. She lied to you and drove you to violence. You deserve a second chance. If you apply yourself and some of your wealth, you could do a great deal of good outside of jail. I will tell the police what I learned about Miss Emma and no more. Well, even if you don't believe I'm innocent, you've given me a chance to prove it. Thank you for staying on my side. Can I... <laughs> I don't want... I didn't Gentlemen, want to do when that. when this matter is resolved, I'll see to it you are sacked. This treatment is unbecoming for a man of uh. my status. Mr. Holmes, you are my witness. Look at him. The murderer playing the indignant victim. He should be a politician. He certainly has the means. I hope he also possesses the character to do better and do good. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. So, wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything, even murder. And then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Hmm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, <sighs> damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. 
I like I want to replay that section and see if it gives me anything new. Oh, fuck, a sneeze. Ah, that was intense. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let's see, what time is this? 1931, 1930, 1930, 32. Is this before I accused? I don't think it will ever tell us if we have everything correct, right? I don't think it will, I don't think it's that kind of game. I think it's just, we get, we learn at the end of the game if what we did was right. So, what is this? Mind Palace, Ghost of the Pass. Okay. So again, this is, this is the most likely choice, right? Um, Murderer left the diamond with Emma. Window of opportunity. Luca could have known Emma set him up. Luca scratched Emma. Yes, this is the one that I thought was correct. So, uh... I don't know. Let's see. I don't think Sherlock Holmes is a, uh... Pretty... Like, if I want to roleplay Sherlock, Sherlock will just bring him to justice. Uh, I think I would probably... I don't know if I would help him escape, because I think it's part, partially his fault. But uh, let's accuse him. Let's see what happens here when we do that. I did not realize the accusation there would, like, end the level. I did not think that was going to happen. <laughs> Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. All right. Uh... Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced ah. that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How yeah. on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms. And the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... I... Ha. Of I course. I don't know how you okay. figured it out. But yes, I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards pleading that she dropped this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink. All I suffered while she indulged. Then I grabbed her throat. What do you say, chap? Should we give him a chance? Should we punish him? I think Sherlock Holmes is a cop, so I think Sherlock Holmes would for sure punish him. <laughs> murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not... You'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. 
d devastating. All right, I was not expecting it to like. We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. Interesting. Okay, so I wasn't expecting confirmation there, at, like, at all. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness, so we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything, even murder, and then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Mm, I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, <sighs> damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. This game is buck wild. <laughs> I I really have no idea what to think about this. This game is like it is incredibly janky. Uh while also being like very charmingly weird. Uh I am I'm like truly having difficulty, but I I don't know how much of this is because I'm playing on the like no interaction icons mode and how much of it is just the fact that this game is really strange like it I, I don't think the interaction icons change the fact that like dialogue is just really inconsistent and the UI is really bad A free ride for every hotel visitor. Just tell me where to go. I stumbled into fast travel, apparently. Whoops. <laughs> Is everything all right? If you don't feel up to it, I won't tell anyone. It's just a goodbye, John. It won't be difficult. I've already come to terms with my mother's passing. Hmm. So you really don't remember? To what do you refer? The funeral. Sherlock, you were distraught. At first, I thought this visit would dredge up those feelings, but you've been remarkably level. John, I think I was too young to understand. I couldn't fathom why she would leave me. Perhaps that pain is best left forgotten. On the contrary, it's why I'm visiting her grave. To remember her. I thought you wanted to remember, Sherry. Concentrate, and I'm sure it will come back to you. Yeah, Sherlock was, like, famously addicted to opium in the stories, I believe. And uh, modern interpretations of his character have really leaned into it. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just a loyal servant of my craft. <laughs> that was kind of goofy. Guess I can't interact with that guy. Who's Grave? Where? Where's Grave? Not there. Ah, it's up here. That one? Huh. Uh, 
Uh, I'm pretty sure in BBC Sherlock he was addicted to morphine. House was also addicted to opioids. Yep, say because he's based off of Sherlock Holmes. I am. I'm just very puzzled by <laughs> what I'm looking at. Crimean low life, despising a polyglot. It's a really weird way to refer to someone. <laughs> Oh, he's a lowlife, but he's also a polyglot. <laughs> Alright, what exactly is on the map? Oh, is it just the, the gate to the cemetery that's pointing me at? I'm not really sure what the goal is at the moment. Am I just running this way? Taste book. I can try to recall my mother's funeral. Okay, Mind Palace. My imaginary friend John. Okay, so John is, um, is an imaginary friend. That's why he can teleport everywhere. John has been my friend since childhood. I cannot remember a time without him. He cannot accept that only I can see him. Well, yeah, I mean, if he's a... If, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if he has consciousness, Sherlock. You literally just said he's not an agent. He has no agency. He's an imaginary friend. <laughs> oh, okay. This is what I'm supposed to do. Mycroft was adamant that we leave for London immediately after the funeral. He never told me why, but I saw how unsettled he was by the long requiem. I thought you wanted to remember, Sherry. Concentrate, and I'm sure it will come back to you. The service was sparsely attended. Though my parents were buried separately, the pastor said they're united in heaven. It's figure drawings like he's drawing in his notebook. That. Interesting. I wanted to see her one last time before the coffin was interred and say how I loved her. The chance never came. I, I feel I rather faint. You're fine, you're fine. It's over now. You remembered Aww. everything. Sherlock's a It'll little baby. Soon. He can't he can't handle the fact that he he had a death in the family. And he needs to have a sit down because he's all sad. Rest in peace, Mrs. Holmes. Press F to pay respects. <laughs> Seems familiar, John. Why is it here? <sighs> this watch was a gift. My mother's initials are engraved on it. The piece is in good condition. It must have been placed here only recently. Sherlock blacked out and placed it there himself. Rest in peace, Violet Holmes. Goodbye, Mother. That was a joke. I don't actually believe that. A candle in a small puddle of wax. It cannot have been lit for more than half an hour. Is this really how you want to spend this time? This is my mother's pocket watch, John. Who put it here and why? Are you not in the slightest bit interested? This is excessive, Sherlock. Can you not let the mystery be? 
his mother is not dead and actually was leaving a gift on her own gravestone because reasons. What else is there? A man in fashionable shoes stood near the tomb. The size of the prince suggests he is approximately five and a half feet tall. It was I, Toaster, who did it. It was me. This is excessive, Sherlock. Can you not let the mystery be? It was a man in fancy shoes. Help me, please. A man like you should not speak to a man like me. I mean, hey. Are you able to help me? A man like you should not speak to a man like me. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Just annoying these people on purpose. All right, let's use our uh, smell of vision to see who's a fancy man that's five foot five and has nice shoes. Definitely not this guy, I don't think, right? He was a low life who was despicable or whatever. Okay, can't go up there. Whoa, lighting got interesting for a second. I think there he is. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just a loyal servant of my craft. Could you help me? Don't be angry with me, sir, but I don't know. <sighs> don't mind me, sir. I'm just a loyal servant of my craft. Okay. <laughs> I guess that doesn't... This is kind of what I'm talking about, right? Like... <laughs> Tell me the make and model of tire, but let me assure you, I do not care. Hmm. Ah, well, it was going to be very impressive. Come on, then, the trail continues ahead. Okay, there we go. If we just, I guess, stop moving, the bicycle will appear. We'll be able to see some more. Uh -huh. He mustn't be far away to leave it unattended. It's stained with oil paint. Ah, a painter. The hospital are crypts. If memory serves, they're located at the far end of the cemetery around an old tree. I hope that inspiration strikes upon visiting these beautiful vaults. <coughs> At the very least, you'll enjoy the view. Yours, Mercuria. Sherlock is insufferable, as we've said before. He is just the worst. A 
portable easel was kept there. Yep, it's a painter. The artist working in a cemetery. Do you think he'd paint my portrait? And he has spawned. And it's that oh, guy. Oh, it's that ridiculous artist. Be nice, Sherry. Mr. Holmes. Did you come for another portrait? <laughs> no, no, I jest. You gave quite the performance last night. The hotel was abuzz with your name. I must say I was rather absorbed in it all. The fallibility of men. Such scandal. It was a welcome distraction. Oh, my manners. I am Werner Vogel, art enthusiast and gallery proprietor. Mr. Vogel, I was perhaps too curt when last we spoke. Speak no more of it. Travel takes it out of any man, never mind when this is your destination. Once I learned who you were, the pieces fell into place. Your mother was well liked on Cadona in her time here. I was sorry to hear of her passing. Does your gallery feature more than just portraiture? Oh, of course. We display landscapes, sculpture, modern pieces, too. I am sure we have something that will move you. You must stop by. Only music moves me, I'm afraid. Then you have simply not found your artist yet. Someone whose work hits you in your core. You're still young. I am sure we'll find them. How did you come to possess my mother's pocket watch? Oh, my. It is quite something to witness those powers of deduction firsthand. Yes, I... I left you her timepiece. After her death, there was an estate sale. All of Cordona's elite picking of her remains. I couldn't let such a lovely thing go to those vultures. When I learned your name, I could no longer keep the watch in good conscience. It is yours by right, and I knew you'd find it here. Thank you. I've forgotten all about it, but the moment I saw it, I knew it was hers. Amazing what the young mind forgets and the older can recall. Rather odd, loitering in a cemetery. I suspect you'll win, but I'm here for my art. There's beauty everywhere if you look, even in decay. A little darkness brings out the light. Now, a diligent observer might note that you too are loitering in a cemetery. What brings you here? Closure? Answers? Penance? Closure, I suppose. And what is closure? Mere proximity? Understanding. Acceptance. You didn't understand from afar. You had to come here to accept the truth of her death? Of course I understand. She died of consumption, drowning in her own blood. Your mother? Yes, my mother. Hmm. I must have been misinformed. I'd heard otherwise. Otherwise than consumption? No, no. You'd know better than I. I'd heard <laughs> talk a of a prick. police investigation, <laughs> but Cordona is a notorious gossip. Now what does it matter? She's passed on either way. She has. Well, I shall intrude no longer. I'll leave you to your closure. Do stop by the gallery if your travels permit. Farewell. Are you all right, Sherry? Take as long as you need. Hmm. Whatever I need, it isn't here. We should explore Cordona. Perhaps there are archives that may shed further light. Okay, so this is like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is a open world detective game so i have to trot my ass down to the police station and the newspaper and see what the hell is going on <laughs> oh no All right. <laughs> Let's run on down. <laughs> when do I unlock my bicycle? That's my question. May I ask for your assistance? Can't say I know. All right. Interesting. What a bizarre game. Uh, 
Raf says, by the way, Tears of the Kingdom is going to cost $70. Is that the Breath of the Wild sequel? That sounds about right for a new game. I mean, Nintendo games are expensive. They never go down in price. Raf says, Nintendo was $60 until now. This will be the first $70. Uh, you say that, but in the past, Nintendo games were much more expensive. <laughs> Some N64 games were like $85. It was absurd. And the Switch tax has always been a thing. Oh, I guess that's the bridge I need to go to, right? I kind of was on autopilot. I was thinking about Nintendo, and it, it just made me lose my mind. <clears throat> uh, Raph is mentioning dollars, but it, it definitely will be more expensive in Brazil. You have, like, weird console import taxes and... and stuff there right like there aren't official distributors or something or if there are they're really expensive i remember hearing about that uh but i don't know much about it Yeah, it's all about taxation and, and the import fees, right? Something like that. It's wild. Is there a fallen cart? Did I run by something interesting? Wait, what? British Sergeant Affable harms animals. What? <laughs> This isn't a fallen cart. This is a, that's just a guy. That's a fast travel point. Is, is this what it was? This thing? Uninteractable cart. Uh, <laughs> open world detective game. It is really weird. This is exceptionally strange. I was not expecting this at all. Especially not mixed with like the weird campy tone that this game has. Uh, I do admit that I am, like, slightly interested in <laughs> this idea of, like, an open-world detective game, uh, if only because it does kind of bring, like, Pathologic 2 to mind, which is just one of the best games ever, so if it kind of manages to do that, uh, that would be neat. Did someone just leave their baby out? No. Okay. Uh, Splinter says, if you're going to do open world, at least give us side investigations for XP so we can level up our skills. I mean, I'm sure that there will be, I'm sure that that's how you end up finding most of the investigations is like doing stuff in the open world. We're just still like technically in the tutorial. Stop the presses. Who is Cordona's handsome stranger? Or Nosebagger Spurn's local life? Wait, uh, no. Foppish foreigner hides dark past. I, uh, um. Oh, you've made quite the impression already, Mr. Holmes. You care to tell your side of the story? I am quite certain I have no idea as to what you refer, and I am further certain I have no interest in indulging your gossip. Gossip? The truth will come out. But will only be heard if told well. Scandal, daring do, romance. 
These are the tools of every good journalist. Nothing travels faster or lasts longer than a great story. Young man, your tale will be told with or without you. My readers demand it. You already knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this newspaper is your little endeavor? Yasmin Sertel, editor-in-chief of the Cordona Chronicle. Advocate of the free press, voice of the people, scourge of the silk stocking. Charmed, I'm sure. As an advocate of the free press, I trust you'll permit me to consult your archives? There are gaps in my knowledge of Cordona. Oh, so my work does have merit. Well, I think we can strike a bargain. I shall provide you access, and you let me keep writing about your exploits. So be it. Brooding bachelor builds bridges. Now that's character development. I guess I owe you my gratitude. What can I say? I've always enjoyed working with the Holmes. They whisper such interesting things. She's worked with Minecraft before? Interesting. Uh, Raf says, it's also weird because this game is called Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I thought it would be episodic, but I think it's Chapter 1 because it's an origin story. Yes, that is the reason why it's called Chapter 1. All right, uh, people, celebrities. Eighteen seventy seventy nine, and I don't know where they're from, but obituaries. All right, so it should be period seventy commoners section obituaries. Not look. All right, huh? It's difficult to understand here because it very specifically mentions the mother's funeral, but. Uh, Splinter says this game is very reminiscent of the Sinking City. Is it the same developer? Yes, it is. This is a uh, Frog Warriors game. Oh my god. Choose evidence marked with the book icon. Okay, so it's something if it has a book icon, but it doesn't look like there's anything that has a book icon. Wait, except Vogel's story, which does have a book icon. Why doesn't it show up right here? Ah. To obituaries, to current events, front page, articles and interviews. Nope. I'm confused. Period. Old archives. Section. Obituaries. District. Grand Saray. No. I'm so confused. All right, let me, I need to check something. So my question is, uh, my question is, how do I, look up 
How do I look up the information about his mother's death? What, when was his mother's death? Must have been, what, 10 years ago? So, there you go. People, uh, commoners, section, district, grand soiree. Nope. People, journalists, nope. Celebrities, nope. Officials, nope. I am very puzzled. And I can't select more. I don't care about John's diary. Maybe I'll ask this lady. I'm watching you closely, Mr. Holmes. Nope. Is this familiar to you? I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. All right, let's go to the police first, I guess. Maybe their archives will hold something different. Excuse me, just one question. I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You sure you know what you're doing? I'm just very puzzled because like sometimes <laughs> it like gives me all the things I'm looking for. It gave me a location, which was in there. It gave me a, uh, a, a time period, which was like 10 years ago when she died. And it gave me, uh, wait, where's the cops? There we go. And it gave me a, uh, a, like, thing to investigate, which was, like, the, the different articles and stuff, but there's just nothing. Like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Alright, let's move forward. See what we can do. Talk to the cops, I guess. Cause. Stark do this, Stark do that. I'm not a clerk, damn it. How am I supposed to get those records now? Yes, what is it? Would you like to report a crime? No, I wouldn't. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I want to use the police archives. Wouldn't we all? I'm serious. So am I. Officer Logan locked himself inside and he's not letting anyone in. But why the archives? Won't that stall everyone's work? You bet it will. He's looking up all the thieves in Cordona over the past decade. Say one thing for Logan. He's persistent. Uh, in chat, people are talking about the Sinking City. Uh, I do recall there was a dispute between the developer and the publisher of the Sinking City. I'm not sure if that's been resolved yet. It has been. Uh, however, the only way, I think, to get the d developers paid rather than the publisher is by buying it on their site. I think all of the ports still fund their publisher, even though the publisher like stole the IP or something. Um, however, the question, is The Sinking City a good game? Uh, I have heard nothing but terrible things, and I would not play it on Switch, because I hear the Switch port is abysmally bad, uh, as most next-gen game Switch ports are known to be. What happened exactly? A tailoress from Scaladio has been robbed. Logan spent two whole days at the shop sketching the thief, and she still insists that it's all wrong. That shrew drove him up the wall, she did. Would you mind if I talk to this tailoress? I could get you the sketch in no time. Get off your high horse, mister. You think you're better than our sketch artist? Actually, I'm quite certain I am. Let me prove it. Well, I see no harm in it, as long as it gets Logan out of there. In fact, I need to look up some records too. Here's the address. Good luck. Raph says, this situation is similar to Disco Elysium. It actually isn't in this case. Uh, Disco Elysium's IP is currently contested, but the original creators have a pretty good chance of winning in court. Um, and the developer, technically, is still the one with the rights to it. It's just the founding members of like the art collective that created the setting don't have the access. In this particular instance with The Sinking City, Frogwares was like cheated out of their game and didn't make any money off of it at all, like from the start. Um, so Disco Elysium is like a product of success issue where like someone took advantage of the fact that like the studio was expanding. Whereas in this case, it was like an actual, like 
illegal contract situation. Yeah, it's it the and I'm not I'm not correcting you um to to like say like oh you're wrong. I'm correcting you because it's both really fascinating situations, right? Because in this particular case, uh, Frogwares had to work very very hard just to get their games like for example like delisted from Steam and they literally legally couldn't because essentially as a result of this bad contract the publisher had the rights to say no we want the steam page up and like so like the way that they're working around it is by like only making it possible to buy the game on their website i guess because technically they have the ability to do that Can again satisfy my curiosity a solid question sir but i don't have the answer Again, I don't have like all the answers. I'm not super up to date on the on the situation, but it's really intriguing because it kind of demonstrates two different sides of the uh, the video game kind of uh, IP issues, right? Because in Disco, with the with the case of Disco Elysium, uh, the do you know anything about this? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this. The the issue, so to speak, with the Disco Elysium stuff is that the development company that is making the game and the person that funded it are like arguably uh, have like ill intentions, right? Like they have ill intentions with the property. They booted a bunch of people who like started the studio out, um, including the original IP creators. But the thing is, is that that's like a, that's like a studio versus creator issue, which I mean, Terrible that it happened in Disco Elysium, but also relatively standard thing that happens in the industry, right? Um, you have like auteur directors that end up. God, this jail is awful. They're just torture people here. Um, but as I was saying, like you, you have this issue of, you know, like a, a capitalist uh, company. I'm working. She wants a proper sketch. I'll make her a proper bloody sketch. Okay. Uh, but yeah, with Disco Elysium, you, you have this issue of, uh, you know, like, the, the ill intentions of a developer outliving the ideals of the people who originally created it, right? But in, in that case, there's actually a pretty strong plausibility that the original creators will get access back to the IP, because, again, the studio did not create the IP, the creators did. And they have legal precedent showing that. There is a book published in the Disco Elysium setting um, that is under Robert Kurbitz's name. So, like, you know, th that's just a regular, for lack of a better word, like, boilerplate legal issue that could possibly be solved and there could be a happy ending to it. And again, a lot of the developers that worked on Disco Elysium 1 are working on Disco Elysium 2. In the particular case of the older Sherlock Holmes games, I think this one as well, um, it was like an actual situation of like someone scamming the developers and, and skimming off the top and legally putting them into a bind. So just kind of interesting. All right. I'm just trying to figure out what is interactable around here. Doesn't really seem like there is much. Sorry, I'm busy now. All right, I needed to talk to his tailor, I guess. Right? I wasn't actually paying attention because I was detailing a weird situation. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I clearly have nothing to do with what you are asking about. Sure. Could you help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Time to check your who, what, and... Oh, here we go. Police need to get a sketch of the thief who robbed Mrs. Mrs. Nini's atelier. The sketch artist was unable to capture the likeness of the culprit, but my disguise skills may prove more effective. The atelier is located at the intersection of Knights Road and Tr uh, Trinity what, Way Sherry? and Scaladio. Who are you asking about okay. what and dressed as what? So, Scaladio, uh, what was it? Knights Road and uh, some other one. Baskerville Street. Interesting. 
Uh, let's see. Knight's Road and Trinity Way. Oh, like right there, I guess. Oh wait, no, that's Thunder Road. Where's Trinity Way? Here we go. Knight's Road and Trinity Way. Ooh wee. What an absolutely bizarre game. This is gonna be a hell of a lot for the YouTube people. Wow. Sorry folks, I'm, I'm wandering around aimlessly because I just have no idea what I'm doing. This is fascinating. this familiar to you? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. I guess I can't interact with them unless I have evidence Help pin. me, please. Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. May I ask you something? I won't help you, sir. Excuse me? Huh. I'm pleased to meet you, ma'am. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm here to sketch the thief for the police investigation. Oh, what another one. I hope you'll be more patient than the previous sketches, signore. I suggest we do it differently. You have a great many clothes here, haven't you? Why, of course, but they're not for sale. I only do tailoring and mending. No matter. I'll attempt to disguise myself as the thief, and you'll tell me if I get it right. As you wish, in your homes. <laughs> Can you describe the thief for me? This he woman just putting up with and Sherlock. He up looking. An utter rascal, if ever I'd seen one. He gave me a nasty look from behind his glasses and then made himself scarce. And... That's it? Could you be more specific? He was a total villain, I told you. How much more specific do you want me to be? All right, never mind. Where can I find the clothes? They're in my workshop at the back. Uh, be careful, won't you? Oh my god, am I gonna have to like... I'm profiling someone right now. This is awful. Sherlock really is a cop. Sure, I'll just pilfer. I'll pilfer your your area and just take all your clothes because why not? We what have a job to do, Sherlock. Oh, come on, at least do him first. Oh. He's just robbing this woman blind. <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the world? I can't even believe this right now. Fezzes are cool, get it? Cause like Doctor Who and stuff, that's a line from that. Man makeup. There we go. Let's give this a try. Baby Barry asks, is Watson dead and Sherlock is just seeing him? This John is not Watson. It is it is Sherlock's imaginary friend. He did wear glasses, but not like those. His were angular and evil looking. Alright, I'll try another pair. 
angular and evil looking. All right. I can't change clothes here. What? Your face is too innocent now. What do you mean, too innocent? There was something evil about his face. Like a moustache. Yes, ah. the kind that all villains twirl as they plot their evil plans. I'd say that not all villains wear moustaches, but I get your point, Mom. <laughs> this is absurd. Also, welcome to the chat, Baby Barry. I, I meant to say hello. Uh, let's see. Uh, wardrobe, and then we'll go to his mustache, and we'll give him, I guess, this kind of mustache. Those clothes are wrong. He was dressed in a very fancy beige suit. Must have stolen it from someone. No doubt about it. All right, I've got it. Uh, uh, she gives me absolutely no description, and then I just have to keep walking in and out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There we go. He was wearing a hat. Didn't I tell you about the hat? It didn't go well with his suit. That man had no dress sense at all. Well, what did it look like? Oh, just a regular hat, you know, black. Oh my god. This is like quirky and funny, but also just like absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I cannot believe this game is making me do this. Ah, it's you. I mean, it's him. It's him! Excellent. Now I can make a sketch and take it to the police. Yes, please do. That rascal is still on the loose. I hope they are better at catching than sketching. Before I go, Mom, are you quite certain that you don't have any clothes to sell? Well, I suppose you can take the police uniform. An officer forgot it here years ago, and I don't have any use for it. If you want to buy clothes, visit the outfitters. You can find them all over Codorna. I hear they even do free rentals now. Let me show you where the nearest one is. Thank you very much. This game is bizarro. Just truly out there. He's like, he literally just robbed this woman blind. <laughs> oh man. What a disaster. I'm beginning to think that Sherlock is the bad guy. <laughs> Alright, they said there's clothiers all over the place. Should we just walk around till we find one? Do I have to balance money? Is that a thing that I need to worry about? Because if so... Boy, this game is freakishly weird. <laughs> this is probably a, like a fisherman's shack. Yeah, can't even go in there. Sherlock is a menace. An absolute just nightmare child. Yeah. He runs like a gremlin, too. This game has uh, that sort of feel uh, where I, I can't really explain it but it feels like a uh like a unity tech demo <laughs> where like the way you move and like the feeling of the character in their world is just like slightly too floaty and weird and the animations like transition really quickly it's very odd I'm just looking for clothing shops. I wanted to see if I could find any, but... 
I don't know if I'll be able to. Aha, the red light district. Help me, please. Sorry, but I can't be of help with that, sir. <gasps> I wonder what she could be of help with. Can I ask you a question? Will you cry if I don't answer your questions? This isn't working. You might need a different tack. All right, I probably will walk back oh, to the uh, the cops. Oh, what is his what do his special eyes say about those people? Let's check actually. Scottish, oh, we call them prostitutes. That's rough. Sex worker. <laughs> Works in a garden. Friendly. Okay, well, that's nice. Oh, man. Religious fanatic. Ah, I wonder if she'll, like, sacrifice Sherlock. Heavy smoker, sympathetic. Excuse me, just one question. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't help you. Didn't sound very Scottish to me. <laughs> All right, well, aside from some out of date terminology, I suppose he isn't all that bad when it comes to the world's oldest profession. Uh, let's go back there. I'm supposed to believe that this is like Sherlock's childhood home, but it just doesn't track. <laughs> he does not seem this cultured. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, let's see. Hello again, officer. I've spoken to the tailoress and made a sketch of the thief. It was child's play. No, really? And she didn't give you any trouble? No, no trouble at all. She was quite tolerable. This huh. is a lie. Who would have thought? Hey, Logan, we've got the sketch. Come on out. Can I use the archives now? Well, they're generally not accessible to the public. But you really helped us out, so I'll just turn a blind eye. I appreciate it, officer. What did you say your name was? Holmes, come and see me after you're done. I may have a proposition for you, Mr. Holmes. Also, there's no way Logan just heard him. Logan's like all the way over here. Nothing there. Nope, old lady, librarian. All right. Uh, Incorrect. I do not want this case. I want Vogel's thing. There we go. All right. Uh, districts, Grand Saray, crimes, violent crimes, subjects, suspects. All I found in the archive was an empty folder labeled thusly, Case of Violet Holmes, April 9th, 1869. Stonewood Manor, Grand Saray. There's no documents inside at all. It seems there really was a police investigation, yet all of the case files are missing. Nothing. John, I just recalled that we were living here on Cordona in a manor. 
And there was a policeman. Really? What else do you remember? What happened to our mother? The memory was vague, a, a mere flash. I have to find our house. Absolutely. Let's do it. I mean, we're supposed to know. Sherlock knows that he grew up here. How does he know he didn't? How did he not know that he lived in a manor? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm done with the archives for now. Can I help you with anything else? As a matter of fact, you can. The thing is, our chief inspector has vanished, as if we weren't on demand enough as it is. Wait, what do you mean, vanished? Gone missing on a case. Shady business, but that's besides the point. See that board? Pending cases are posted there for any available officers to investigate. I would take them myself, except that I've been told to work the reception desk, like some clerk. Yes, we're that short-handed. I understand your predicament, but what does any of it have to do with me? I may be available, but I'm certainly not an officer. Oh, don't worry about it. Consider yourself a temporary one-man independent police force. That's a bit of a mouthful. There's just one small, minor, basic formality. You'll need to complete our physical training course. Easy. Well, I'm not one to balk at a spot of exercise. What must I do? Ask the spirit. Sergeant Ermy will show you the ropes. Follow me. All right. I think this is a good spot to stop for the night. Uh, it's getting a little bit late. I'm a little bit sleepy. Uh, after all the tech issues, I kind of want to take a break now. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching this bizarre game. I guess we are going to... Uh, I guess we're going to keep playing this weird game. Just figure out what the hell this is all about. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll stream more of this tomorrow, I guess. I, I, yeah. Huh. That's all I got to say. See you next time, folks. Peace out.